one night we got up, we went to Lakemba Mosque. Uh, funny enough, on the way to Lakemba Mosque, we got pulled over by the police. A car comes straight for us, and then another police car, and another police car, and about 20 police cars, and they stopped us, and they took us out of the car, and they said, wait there, and they said, uh, you know, this is a stolen vehicle. This is the story of Brother Carlo, a convert from Australia, and now his name is Ahmad. He told this story in an interview with Muslim Australia TV. Ahmad was born to Italian Catholic parents who had lived in Australia for a long time and he was even born in Australia. He converted to Islam about 25 years ago. His journey in search of God started when he was very young. Back then, his grandmother and the people around him often warned him to be careful with Muslims because Muslims are evil. When I was young, my grandmother used to tell me, um, stay away from the Muslims, they're evil. And I, I used to think, wow, the Muslims are evil, you know? And Muslims being Lebanese, you know, like, we, because we grew up like thinking that only Lebanese were Muslims, yeah, right? Didn't know it, there was Indonesian Muslims and, and whatever, but every Muslim was a, was a Basil High. Yeah, well, Basil High, Yaguna, Bankstown, right? And she said, you know, the Muslims, they, they worship the devil. And if they have an opportunity, they'll kill you. Instead of being afraid, he was curious about Islam. His thoughts on divinity evolved. He believed that God did exist, but did not know what the purpose of life was. Young age is not an obstacle to getting guidance. Allah will open the doors of these for anyone who seeks it. While at school, Ahmed Carlo meets Saadi, a kind-hearted Muslim. It was an encounter he didn't realize he had. But, it was the beginning of his discovery of Islam. Although Saadi did not actually teach him Islam, Shadi's good behavior made Ahmed Carla feel at home with him, and they became friends. So I was at school. Uh, it was uh, the later years of school, year 11, year 12. Well, I met, I met a friend, a good friend, Shadi. You know, he, it was funny because when I was at school, I used to hang around with the Aussies, right? And we used to make fun of the walks essentially right and so shadi was part of a small group which we called the arabs right so they were a little little group what, 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 like, best best high school yeah best high school. Yeah, yeah so, so basically, basically best, best high school, school has like, like what we call a quadrangle, quadrangle like it's a quad, quad and each group controls an area of the quad and so the, the the arab quarter was down sort of further away and then you had mixtures of everyone else well, Shadi was there amongst those, and and I didn't really like the the arrogance of of the of the group that I was hanging around with. But that's all I knew. So when uh, I got to know him, uh, we became good friends, and we started the band together. The friendship between these two people continued until they were adults. Plus, they both shared the same hobby, music. To continue their hobby, they opened a nightclub on Jacob Street. Carlo's heart for Islam at that moment did not pray, but rather seemed to crawl. The essence of life that he had been searching for since childhood had yet to be found, until he finally did the things that made him happy. Uh, and then we started a nightclub. Anyway, so we, we were in that scene and, and we were running these nightclubs. We used to let them in for free okay. and we became popular with the, uh, with the police. But anyway, so one night, you know, we were sitting together and we're watching everyone dancing and making fools of themselves. One night I, I think we, we made a decision. We wanted to turn the music off and see what people do, right? See, see what, what the reaction, reaction is. You actually experimented. We experimented, experimented. yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. So, so, so sent a message, message to the, to the DJ, DJ and said, turn, turn the music, music off in, a, in exactly five minutes. Okay. Don't warn anyone. So he turned the music off and it was like the people who were dancing, it took them a good 20 seconds to realize that the music was off and to react and it was like everyone just went into a zombie zombie mode they didn't know what to do you know and it was at that moment i realized that this can't be it <laughs> life was uh, a combination of uh, highs and lows so you know we would try to you know do things to to feel happy and feel good about ourselves and then you know at the end of the night when everybody went their way you find yourself alone again, yeah. then you crash. 
Such happiness is not what he expected. It is only outwardly pleasing, his mouth smiling, but his heart empty and hollow. Some time later Allah gave him another sign. Allah's guidance is unlimited. While with Saadi, Carlo experienced something strange. This is a unique sign that is rarely experienced. Yeah, one night we were uh, rehearsing at, in the back of his house. And his grandmother was a religious woman, and she, she was essentially um, a bit of a, a, a role model or a guide um, for the family in terms of religion. So that particular night we were rehearsing, and according to him, I, I, was, um, I sort of went into a little bit of a trance. Something happened to me or whatever. And all I remember was, um, you know, like deja vu. It was a feeling I got that I felt like I had before right. when I was younger. Uh, but anyway, I saw in this, I don't know if you call it a vision or whatever, but I saw people uh, dressed in white and all standing in rows, right? And they were all facing a black object. And then when I came around, he, he asked, he said, what, what happened to you? You were just like, you know, in a trance. And I explained to him what I saw. And he, um, he said, oh, I'm going to go ask my grandmother because she, she knows. So he runs inside. Then he comes back and he said, wow. He goes, she said, that's how people pray in Mecca. I go, what's a Mecca? <laughs> you know, like, what are you talking about? Hearing Saadi's grandmother's answer, Ahmad Carlo then became confused what had really happened to him. As a curious person, for weeks he pondered about it, the incident always on his mind. Then someone he didn't know suggested that Carlo go to the mosque and ask someone there. Ahmad Carlo went to the mosque with Saadi, but on the way something slowed them down. One night, we got up, we went to Lakemba Mosque. Uh, funny enough, on the way to Lakemba Mosque, we got pulled over by the police. Um, SubhanAllah. It was so funny. So we, we were on Glassop Street, and all of a sudden, a car comes straight for us with its high beams on. Right. And we thought, what the hell is this guy doing? You know, is he crazy? And then sirens came on. This is right outside the mosque? No, 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 no. This is on Glassop Street going towards Lakemba. Okay. And then another police car and another police car and about 20 police cars and they stopped us and they took us out of the car and they said, wait there. And they said, uh, you know, this is a stolen vehicle. So basically towards the end, this car, this police car comes speeding and, you know, like in the movies, you know, this, kid's, this uh, lady police officer comes out and she said, Shadi, this is a stolen car. <laughs> anyway, about an hour later, they, they came to us and they said, oh, well, we made a mistake. Um, the car that was reported stolen was actually in Queensland, not in New South Wales. So, that, that's so it was a big mistake. They said the police made mistakes. <laughs> it was a crazy mistake. Um, but it, funny enough, it was while we were on the way to the mosque, right? So it, when we were going to the nightclubs and when we were doing everything else, no issues, right? After the incident with the police, they rushed to the mosque. He really couldn't imagine how peaceful he felt at the mosque. He met many people and even saw someone say the Shahada. He became increasingly curious about Islam. Although it took a long time, he finally decided to embrace Islam. Praise be to Allah. As soon as I entered Likemba Mosque, mm -hmm. the, the feeling I got was unbelievable. It was overwhelming. Like I felt like something, uh, like something was unreal. You know, I, I, I didn't feel like, I felt, wow, what's this place, you know? Like peace, I felt like real peace. And then, uh, alhamdulillah, we met a couple of people there and they started talking to us about Islam. And there was another Algerian brother, uh, alhamdulillah, he, he was just uh, really, like the inspiration I got from them was amazing. So in a way, you became Muslim? I became Muslim, yeah. after one and a half years. One and a half years. After embracing Islam, Carlo changed his name to Ahmad. He started praying, fasting, and other acts of worship. Telling others about his Islam is difficult. However, people will eventually find out. The people around him slowly began to stay away because some of them did not like Islam. The girlfriend he loved also eventually left him. Yeah, so she was uh, like a girlfriend at the time before I became Muslim. And when I, um, I approached her and I said, oh, I need to tell you something, I, I became a Muslim and she went hysterical like she absolutely wanted to she, i thought she was going to break her house because it was at her house and uh yeah she went hysterical and she said i wanted to be 
a bride. I wanted to have a, a, a wedding in a church. And da, 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 da. Anyway, at the end of the day, um, I said, well, I'm not going to change. So what do you want to do? And essentially we, we split. Uh, she said, good luck with your, your, your life. And I said, good luck with her life. And that was it. Every trial does not have to drag on in sadness. Ahmad Carlo was actually afraid to tell his parents about his Islam. After all, Allah wants to guide his parents, and now both his parents have firmly embraced Islam. It was the most beautiful gift for Carlo. But in a nutshell, my mother, alhamdulillah, became Muslim, and my father also accepted Islam. But my mother, subhanAllah, the, the, just really quickly, so I was at uni, and she was cleaning my room, and I had the Qur'an on the bookshelf. And as she's cleaning the bookshelf, the Qur'an fell and landed on the ground. And it opened in, uh, up to the, the Surah, Surah Maryam. And that's in English? It opened that was in English, yeah. I had English Arabic, yeah. And she picked it up and she started reading. And subhanAllah, she found in that Surah the story of Maryam as a child, which is not in the, in yeah, the Bible. Yeah. That's right. That's right? right. The Christians don't know what happened to Mary as a child. And when she read this book, she, got, she became fascinated. So when I got home, she said, I need to talk to you. I found this book on your shelf. I said, ah, I'm finished. I'm gone. And then she told me the, what she read. She said, I want to know more about this religion. You know, over a short period of time, she accepted Islam. After his parents converted to Islam, Ahmed Carla no longer needed to hide his Islam from people. Islam is getting stronger in Ahmed Carlo. A good Muslim is a Muslim who benefits other Muslims. And that's what Ahmed Carlo does. He tries to be more useful to many people. Even now Ahmed Carlo is participating in Muslims Australia TV. Praise be to Allah. Alhamdulillah, I was uh, actually teaching uh, basic uh, Tajweed and, and alphabet and Quran to, to reverts. Oh, yeah, uh, but that. also to some Lebanese, like some Lebanese brothers who n never had the opportunity to learn Quran. They grew up like you know like Aussies and all of a sudden they found Islam again you know like everybody else and they just realized hang on I can't read Quran they were too embarrassed to go to um, you know a sheikh and say hey you know I'm born Muslim and I can speak Arabic but I can't read Quran so I thought we started off just saying well how about I teach you what I know I mean send little I don't know much but at least you can give you a start Alhamdulillah, it was successful. Like those people, you know, uh, can vouch that they they learned the alphabet. They learned how to read. Now they're, they're reading Quran and they took it to the next level um, beyond what I could uh, do for them. That's all for today's video. Hopefully, it will inspire many people. Go back to the Quran because all the answers to your questions are there. Don't hesitate. Open the Quran and read it. Thanks for watching.